market flannel and a pair of Wrangler jeans. If you know what I mean. He's got a pair of old boots. He's kicked every rock down the street. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, he wants to be a cowboy. Yeah, he calls himself Red Nexon. He's just looking for adventure. Pick and fights with the neighbor king. Yeah, he dreams about the outlaws. Six shooters and spitting blue. Starting fires in his front lawn. You can tell he's not fit in. Howdy, campers. Uh, welcome to the first public episode of Nat Camp, um, a D&D actual play podcast where our four heroes um, here are camp counselors at the famous Nat Camp, um, a fantastical summer camp with fun games, adventure, with a little bit of responsibility, you know, um, all that good stuff. I am your camp counselor. Uh, or supervisor, rather, um, and DM Zach Bayo. I'm Tyson Sunsmo. I'll be playing Telly Muziki, a satyr bard. Uh, my name is Ben Lasser. I am playing a Gohan Bone Snap, but he prefers to even call him Boney. He is a half orc paladin. I am Danny. I will be playing Poppy, and uh, she is a human nature wizard with a love for horses. I'm Jared Natsky. I'm uh, portraying Malga Barrison. He is a mountain dwarf monk. Awesome. For those of you who don't know, we do have a prologue episode up on our Patreon. For those who, um, you know, uh, shot anything towards a Kickstarter uh, or is a patron, um, you do have full access to that full episode. Um, it's kind of the lead up as to, uh, and some backstory with our characters as to why they are, in fact, camp counselors at this summer camp. So we will kind of kickstart uh, with the first day of camp. So you all coming from home, um, Malgam, not too far away from the camp uh, with your hometown here, are on your way to your first day. Um, you weren't given a whole, mu- a whole lot of prep as far as knowledge of uh, what you're going to necessarily need to do. It seems to be a very like learn as you go situation. Uh, You just know that the camp owners um, helped you a great deal uh, in the the issues that you faced previously leading up to this. So um, you were all on the way, Poppy and Telly, where you don't necessarily have some parents to drive you uh, to the camp. Um, you're both kind of taking a taxi service, um, uh, you know, leading, going to the camp here. Um, and so you guys arrive uh, with that, maybe you carpooled. Um, Boney, you are driven by a priest. Um, it is not Father Severe, uh, but a, another priest of your church um, who offered to give you a ride um, and drop you off at camp. And um, Malgam, Town's not all too far away. You're used to the long haul um, and you figured, you know, you may as well get some training out of it. Um, So you you hoofed it to camp. Uh, You all arrive at roughly the same time for, you know, the sake of um, consistent storytelling here. Um, (laughs) You you know, you follow the dirt road um, underneath the wooden uh, Nat Camp banner sign um and it kind of opens up into this very summer camp kind of feel there's a handful of cabins um dotted all around um there are uh, some common area buildings of what looks to be a church off to um one of the sides that's overgrown um and consistently in the shade and you can kind of see start to see uh some of the camp staff uh, other staff, as well as some of the kids that have already arrived um, at camp. Um, so you guys kind of pull up, um, you get out of the cars, or now then you just simply stop running um, <laughs> after you see everybody. And um, I'll let you kind of uh, explore um, and kind of poke around it as you want. Oh, dude. 
Man, try being a 6'6", uh, half-orc in the Prius. Ah, uh, 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 man, I was waiting for that to crack all day. Dolly, how's it going, buddy? Uh, not bad, and as I greet him, I'm kind of using whatever mobile device I have to, like, PayPal or Venmo, um, Poppy for our ride share into camp. Yeah. Uh, Poppy, let me know when that comes through. Let, I hope it's enough. Uh, how's it going, Boney? How was your ride in? Oh, you know, uh, Father Severe was uh, a little busy, so uh, we got uh, Tim, who's a um, very rockin', uh, rockin' priest from the uh, Church of the Grazing, Grazing, Grazing Mustangs. So, uh, man, that was a really small car, and I'm a really big guy. I, I didn't want to be rude, but I Can feel I? like I'm pretzel sorry can i look around to see if there's any interesting herbs around me sure um can you make a uh we'll say a nature check yes telly while well, she's rolling that um you uh you su successfully send the funds over um with your little uh magical uh it's kind of it's like a crystal um for you know lack of a better explainer um think of like the sheikah slate from zelda in a sense uh where it's crystal-esque um with you know some stone that kind of give it some form um and you're able to with you know even just like these smallest traces of magic um kind of do the task uh that is needed um whether that be you know forms of phone calls or uh currency transfer stuff like that i got a non-nat 20. oh all right sweet um, so you know, so you're very familiar with the um, the fauna and uh, various plants of this region. Um, it's similar to where you're from, um, although it is not, uh, you know, like pastures and such. Um, you are familiar with, um, you, you know, a lot a lot of the plants. So where, uh, as as far as your side hustle uh, is concerned. Um, you can find the necessary plants uh, or the necessary types of soil um, or, you know, climate, um, stuff like that to do what you need to do. Sounds good. I'm going to go scavenge a bit. Awesome. All right. Um, so you guys just kind of, whether or not you did fully notice, um, Poppy is just not really there. Um, she took off. Uh, to the tree line um, to kind of scavenge and get what she can. Can I look around for a place we're supposed to like check in? Is there like a main cabin or like an office building? Yeah, so there is kind of like a main cabin um, and you can see um, a woman who is like nailing up some, um, some notices, some lists, uh, stuff like that onto what seems like a uh, like a board, like a common board, you know, that you would walk by, see, make note of, stuff like that. Can I approach her? I want to shrug my, like, tattered backpack off my one shoulder and set down my guitar case and try and get, I'm going to go, <clears throat> uh, we're, we're here, we're your new counselors, I think. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to meet you. Awesome. Uh, my name is Karaki, uh, Karaki Aruda. Um, we, we're, at, I'm your alum, uh, as it were. Um, so super excited, super excited to work with you guys. Um, and you are Tell, Tell, Telly, yes? Telly, yeah. Oh, great. Uh, it, you know, the horns gave it away, but, um, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, what was your name one more time? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's Karaki, K-A-R-A-K-I, Aruda, A-R-U-D-A. No need to spell it. I just, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, yeah, so um, actually it's a, it's a great thing you're right here. Um, so it seems like some of the kids are starting to, uh, to pile in. Um, it's looking like camp turnout this year is smaller than average so oh, thank god <laughs> um luckily oh, you guys will probably find yourself with a uh you know fair bit of uh, free time around camp but 
that's great. It, it'll give you plenty of times to get some of these odd jobs done. Um, and uh, yeah, but um, if you want to head down uh, towards the lake front, um, there's a little amphitheater. That's kind of where we'll be doing all of our introductions. Oh, the, perfect. Hello, uh, Malcolm Ferrison reporting for duty. May I inquire as to how many uh, troops are in my platoon? Ah, Malcolm, I've, I've heard a little bit about you. Um, a plus student, right? Uh, great, yeah. Um, so each of you um, will be getting uh, kind of two kiddos, um, you know, two, two kids per cabin. Um, cabins can be a little rough. Uh, so two, you know, should be easy to handle. And we're in charge um, of them, right? We can tell them. I mean, yeah, they're they're here for the experience. So but we're here to, tra to train them to be better and whatever creatures they are, I suppose. I, mean, I, I get that could potentially be helpful to some to, 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 to break their spirit and, uh, and then build them back up again. Um, You're not saying anything. I, I'm please confirm. We'll we'll get through some introductions. Uh, we'll let you meet everybody, and that way you can kind of get a good feel for the vibe of the camp. How does that sound? Copy that. I will feel out the I vibe. I want to sneak up behind her, and then quietly whisper, "Are there horses?" Go, oh, jeez. Um, hot poppy, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, there can't. Uh, not here specifically uh, ah! but there are horses uh in the camp vicinity so um you should be able to find some some horses um are we like indentured servants no no i wouldn't no i wouldn't say that i'd like well, to leave i'd like to leave now to well, the, the amphitheater bye will the horses be available for uh cavalry if we need to um, do so so I mean, we do have some stables set up. Um, I thought that it would be a very fun activity. Uh, take some of the kids to uh, maybe get some of the horses. So have they, have they been desensitized already to loud noises, explosions? We don't so get we can a use them for us. Live fire exercise inside of this. Um, no, they're wild horses. Copy. You can't tame the untamable. They are nature's magical creatures. Don't like a lot of dudes tame horses. I start running away. Pick Bye, up Poppy. My, I pick up my backpack and guitar and also start walking. Awesome. I pick uh, up uh, my stuff, which is basically just a hobo sack, just a bunch of discarded items. Like, you know when you're packing a suitcase? Okay, this will be my toothbrush, a computer, some shirts, um, a uh, few other things, like no organization, whatever, it's just a bag. You're that kid that like shoves all their papers into their bookcase <laughs> with <am>. no folder. <laughs> like it takes me a, uh, like a good hour to find the assignment you're looking for, it's all wrinkled up. Fantastic. I'm, um, I'm gonna throw on yeah. my, my very neatly organized, very heavy rucksack and just start sprinting towards the auditorium. Awesome. Um, so you all kind of head down towards the um, amphitheater. She finishes uh, kind of hammering up what she was hammering up and um, she makes her way over to the kids as she starts to gesture everybody over to uh, the amphitheater. Um, she comes down to um, to you guys, kind of huddles you up a little bit. It's like, okay, yeah, bring it in a little bit. I put my arms around everyone, which is probably easy because I'm so big. It's full reach, yeah. Um, so she kind of said, okay, so this is gonna be everybody's first introduction to all, all the kiddos, um, you know, so if- I hate them all. Well, that's not a good attitude to, to approach it with, but, you know, keep it peppy, keep it up. Um, they're here for a great camp experience. So um, I'll hop out first uh, if everybody could just introduce themselves um, as you're as you're kind of you know asked to, um, you know maybe potentially why you're here, why you want to be doing this, or uh, what you hope to get out of the camp. Maybe that'll help some of the kids, uh, you know, find what 
find what they want to do in the camp. Um, so you guys can kind of go over that yourselves for the next couple moments. Um, I'm going to hop up uh, to be uh, kind of on the stage and I'll start the introductions. Uh, so I'll give you guys like a quick sec um, to kind of talk some amongst yourselves uh, while she kind of makes her way to the amphitheater stage. Okay, guys, 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 I've got Zvam, Telly, you know how to do music. We shouldn't introduce ourselves in song. I I don't want these kids to think Bony. I'm lame right off the bat. Bo I'm absolutely not doing that. Bony. We'll be cool though, it's be rocking. Bony. Bony. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like some halfling weed? <gasps> but you yes, it, yeah, yeah. It'll it, it, it will be one gold. Do you what are you two whispering about? For this. There's, a, Don't tell me, there's always time. Besides, our campers are probably stressed out. They're going to need a little something. So can I give her. Can I check to see how far into like the opening statement um, she was? Uh, so it hasn't fully started yet. Um, she's just kind of like waiting for everybody to get settled. Although there aren't that many, um, they're all you know all the kids are like finding a little seat and stuff. So she's kind of waiting for him to die down a little bit before she starts talking. Okay, we have time. Boney, go for it. And I also give Poppy one gold. I give her one gold too. Here you go. Half right. stuff. And What's then, I, then I run and sit in the corner. <laughs> okay. So Poppy, you dart for the corner. Um, you guys light up. Um, can you roll constitutions for me? First of all, let's do this. 14. 14, okay. 21. Oh, wow. It's almost like I do this. <laughs> it's almost like you guys are really good at doing this. Um, you're feeling good. It's like full effects, none of the bad stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, and just in time, um, after your little chimney, um, Karaki, you know, it, everybody settles down, she said, Welcome all you kiddos to Nat Camp. Um, it is great to see you all today. Uh, happy and well, my name is Karaki Aruda. Um, I will be the camp supervisor. Um, a little bit about me, I graduated from Skies University with a, uh, a BA in Monk Studies and a minor in Clerical History. Um, I have been at this camp for about 15 years now um, and am always excited each year to see all your faces uh, new and, uh, well, there's none returning, but, uh, if you have any questions, I can always be found, um, at the smaller cabin to the east, um, that is located, you know, right on the lake. Um, so now, uh, let, let's introduce your new camp counselors this year. Um, starting with, um, uh, Tally. Tally. Come on. Uh, uh, and I, I slowly walk forward. As I step out, I'm going to let you know what these kids see. So eyes kind of red at this point, little squinty. I'm putting my hair up in a teal bandana, but normally it's shoulder length, kind of wavy chestnut brown. Uh, I have a bit of a baby face, but it's really angular, like a young Nicolas Cage or like a Timothy Chalamet. Uh, and like a skater boy upper body, I'm like, lean you can almost see like my wrist bones and where my elbows are really like prominently my legs are covered in the same chestnut color fur and i have the tips of my hooves painted i'm wearing a tie-dye cutoff t-shirt with a picture of a bully wug um giving a hang loose sign and it reads rip it and ribbit class of 1794 and then on my like goat legs, I have loose jean shorts with like rips and patches sewn in. And on my hooves, custom satyr fit Birkenstock uh, style sandals. And I'm gonna step forward, say, uh, hey, I'm, I'm Telly, uh, stoked to be here. Super cool, you all look cool. All uh, like eight, I think there's eight of you. Uh, I don't know a ton about camping. I'm here, I'll be fully honest. I'm here because I have to be, but that doesn't mean I don't want to be. And uh, I don't know a ton about camping, but maybe we can learn about it together. What do you say? And then I take a 
a step back and kind of push Boney out onto the stage. Awesome. Um, after after you're done talking, uh, there are two kids in the crowd. Um, they seem to be almost identical looking, um, and they're just kind of like. Uh, and, and Boney, you get kind of ushered onto the stage uh, by Telly. I confidently smut on stage, and here's the thing about Boney: like he's smiling, he's happy, he's jumping up and down, he's doing his best to seem friendly to the kids. Here's the thing, though. He's six and a half feet tall, a good 265 pounds of muscle. He's got giant Ascara on his face, giant tusks. He's a half orc, but he looks more orc than human. So he's got dark green skin, really piercing yellow eyes. His face is clean shaven, but he's got long black hair. So he's smiling, trying to be friendly, but this probably just makes things worse. Um, He's wearing uh, some comfortable jeans, some chain mail, and on top of the chain mail um, is a 80s style looking t-shirt for the um, grazing mustangs the uh, church he's a part of because he's a paladin and he's gonna walk up and just start clanking his uh, accent just like Matt Camp are you guys ready to walk and uh, as you just really try and get get them going um, there are a handful of kids the two specifically um, that were kind of like clapping are like jumping essentially on top of each other like it almost instigated like a little just like push fight um and uh as a handful of other kids as well they're just like yeah! you dudes have the spirit okay so a little bit about me i am the very first paladin of the church of the grazing mustangs um listen we're all about partying so we're here to have fun also about adventure, learning to doing books. <laughs> I've never made through a book in my life, and look how I turned out. And mostly, we're all about treating each other wonderfully. So, be kind to everyone, walk out, and let's kick ass this camp! Woo! At, I air at guitar with the... my holy guitar pick. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, at the mention of the word ass, you just like all the kids are just like, yeah! <laughs> like totally geeking. Um, hey, because, well, I am yeah. a saint, they will look upon you guys most wonderfully. Woo! Uh, yeah, just the sheer use of a swear word just gets <laughs> everybody really riled up, really going. Um, and yeah, uh, as you exit, who are you gesturing towards? Okay, towards? I'm, I'm gonna say, okay, no, welcome next on the, on the stage. She is my friend and yours, the coolest nature wizard you'll ever see, a proprietor of stuff I'm not allowed, to, not sure I'm allowed to tell you, but it is awesome stuff. The most rocking person who's gonna come up after me, give it up. For Poppy! And I try to get everyone hyped for Poppy. Poppy really awkwardly approaches, head down, eye contact with no one. She's lifted her hands to make, bl sorry, she's lifted her hands to make blinders so that no one can even potentially look at her. Uh, and she's, she's painfully and debilitatingly socially awkward, very shy. Uh, she's wearing jeans and a tank top, a pink tank top that looks like it's probably from something like Limited 2, if anyone remembers those days. Uh, she has strawberry blonde hair and pigtails, and she has a lot of freckles. So you, you all, she's a horse girl. You all, you all know the type. Um, anyway, she gets up and she says, hi, I'm Poppy. Um... I can do this, and she becomes a horse. <laughs> Are you like actually? Yes, she's using her ability to transform into a horse. Oh, fantastic! Uh, so, in um, although the small crowd of kids really just died down as soon as you took the stage, um, like night and day compared to Boney's uh, situation, um, as soon as you turn into a horse all the kids are like standing just like oh, 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 oh. and they're all trying to get like a little bit closer to the amphitheater stage just like 
totally geeking. Uh, I'm freaking out now because I feel like the stuff she gave me was way stronger than I thought it was initially. <laughs> I, I, I turned out to like, dude, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is she a horse for you too? Yeah. Okay, either we're both insane or this is normal. And I just lean back like nothing's happening. Nay. No, Poppins is definitely a horse right now. I'm seeing it too. Oh, thank goodness. And then I'll just trot off stage. <laughs> you just trot off stage. Um, that leaves uh, Malcolm. Can I feed her an apple from my backpack? Sure. I packed one. Love yeah. it. Pull out an apple. Yeah. So Malcolm struts on stage, channeling George C. Scott in the movie Patton, um, imagining whatever flag is behind him, just huge, amazingly big. So Malcolm is, uh, he's on the tall end of the dwarf spectrum. He's about five feet tall, which is pretty tall for a dwarf. Um, he's hes pretty muscly, you know, hes he works out. He, he ran here, you know, he, he climbed a tree because he got there early and then he climbed down and was waiting for everyone. So he's he's pretty fit, um, not like not like huge, but like he could beat you in a fight, and he's he's pretty fast. Um, uh, unlike a lot of dwarves, he's he's more clean cut. He's got a sh he just doesn't have a beard shaved. He's got like fiery fiery red hair, bright green eyes, but uh, it's kind of like cut. His hair's cut into like a crew cut because he, you know, he he's eyeing that military career. So he looks out on the children and begins launching into a inspired speech. Troops, I'm proud to see you today. I, only a, a few days ago, I was a, a soldier without an army. And here I stand before you, my army. I am thirsty to lead you into battle, whether that be actual battle with danger and, and destruction and death or the the battle of the spirit, where we fight not only ourselves, but the shortcomings that ourselves must not have. Children, only a few days ago, I, I died. I, I died and I saw what, is, what comes after. And uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's nothing. There's nothing after this. There is only this life. And I, I plan to do as much with this life as I can. I will help you do the same. I will make you better. I will make you stronger. I will make you more fierce than you ever thought you could. My army. Damn, I'm proud of you. And then he just, just salutes as hard as he can, marches off stage. Every child is speechless. Um, the two, the twins, it seems, are near tears, so excited. Um, and Karaki uh, comes up, takes the stage again. Like, that was that was very enthusiastic. I I really liked all of your all of your uh, presentations for yourselves. Great, great job, everybody. Um, now, uh, to continue, um, as some of you may know, the camp can get pretty dangerous. <laughs> like, uh, you know, Malga mentioned there. Um, so to help us out, uh, we do have a camp cleric. Uh, her name is Teresa. Um, she can be found on the shade corner of the grounds here and her door is always open um, to those who need help. Um, Olaf is another member of the team that will be helping us out. Um, he is the camp chef. Um, and in kind of the back, uh, you do get a brief look at Olaf, very obviously, but trying to hide it, but way too obviously sipping from a flask. And lastly, there is Thero. Um, Sartamal, uh, he will be your supplier of goods, uh, such as weapons, adventuring gear. Um, you can also sell your found treasures um, that you find at the camp for currency or other items that he might have. You'll just have to talk to him about that. Now I will, uh, I'll let you get yourself to your cabins as well as your counselors. I gave everybody 
um, all the kids here, you know who you're going to see. Um, so find them and um, they'll lead you to your cabins. And so she takes a step off um, towards you guys and hands each of you like a little uh, kind of tag with a key on it. Um, and they're all kind of numbered with a little symbol on the back. And so first uh, we'll start with, um, what was that? I'll stop being a horse. Okay, uh, so you, yeah, you switch back. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, great. So you kind of switch back. <laughs> Let me. Here. While you're doing that, can I, uh, yeah. Kind of Malcolm's like, listen, dude, um, I know we all uh, died and we don't really know what we saw, but like, maybe the fact that we came back from the grave is like a day to reveal. Like, they don't even know our na last names now. Like, oh, no. Can I butt in and be like, Malgram, that was so fucking metal. And I want to give him 1d6 bardic inspiration whenever he chooses. <laughs> and be like, those kids were eating every word you said. Like, they were starving for it. That was awesome. That was so cool. Um, so, Malgram, um, you do have bardic inspiration. For those of you who don't know with Bardic Inspiration, um, it's a D6 that you get to use um, for like an ability check, um, a, you know, a, like any of those types of roles. Um, so if you find yourself low on a roll and want to burn that, let me know, make sure to make note of it or cross it off um, as you use it. And it's an extra D6 that you just kind of get to throw anywhere. Um, so let's start with Telly, why not? Right, you're right to my left on my screen anyway. So, um, <laughs> uh, so Telly. So after you say that, um, you have two uh, little girls run up to you, um, and they're like, "Hello, um, I am Ophelia, and I am Caroline." Um, and a, at a quick glance, um, one is a dragonborn. Um, uh, Ophelia is a dragonborn. And Caroline is a dark half elf. Um, so sticking with uh, the darker skin tone as well as more pale hair um, that you know generally comes with uh, being a dark elf. Uh, as you look at them um, and then your key, um, it says uh, one, like the number one on one side and on the other side, it is a snowflake um, on your little key tag. Um, and so you can imagine that you are Captain One. Um, and they kind of look at you and are like, um, we have all of our stuff still. Can we can we go drop it off in the cabin? Yeah, yeah, I have to do that too. And I want to scoop my stuff back up. Uh, I'm Tally, uh, I introduced myself out there. You guys know. Okay, let's, let's mm -hmm. go to the cabin and I just start walking. Okay, um, and they're following suit um, like right behind you. Um, and you get to the cabin and it's, the windows seem to be foggy almost. Like you can't necessarily see into them. Um, it looks like there's just fog creeping from the edges kind of towards the middle. Um, and, uh, as you go to unlock that door, um, you do, you open it up and just get a complete blast of freezing cold air. Um, you take a step inside and it is um, similar to the little symbol on the back of your keychain. It is an Arctic tundra within this cabin. Um, in front of you, you see it opens up immensely um, and you see you get a, there are two igloos essentially, um, one for the two girls and one for you. Um, and there's like a little snow path to them. Um, but yeah. All right, uh, girls, you pick which igloo. I'm gonna dig through my backpack to find a sweatshirt. I picked the wrong day to wear a cutoff. And they're both just like, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and they like kind of make their way um, to uh, like the igloo, the igloo that kind of has two beds in it, um, two like kind of twin beds um, and they get their stuff set up. Um, and as it's almost like as soon as they set their stuff down in the igloo, they just dip, they leave, they get out of that cabin. 
like right away. <laughs> I don't blame them. I want to put my stuff down and do the same. I'm I'm going okay. back where it's warm. Cool. So you set your stuff in your igloo, um, and you kind of leave, um, and you're now kind of outside um, your little cabin um, with your two campers. Um, next, we'll jump to Gorehand uh, or Boney. Sorry. Um, so you are. So your two little ones um, kind of run up to you. Um, it's a, it's a boy and a girl. Um, they kind of look at each other and then look at you. And the girl says, "I'm Reagan," and the boy says, "I'm Elias." Uh. Since there's kind of small creatures, I'm probably looking around, still feeling a little bit popsick. Who said that? Who said that? Looking at my eye level. And as you ultimately kind of shift your gaze down lower and lower and lower, um, you see Reagan is um, a goblin um, and Elias is a halfling, so both very small, um, but kind of standing right in front of you um, and ready. Oh my goodness. You two look awesome. Oh, you're so compact and what oh, are. We're gonna be friends. We're gonna be friends, dudes. Okay. Um, they got to bring their stuff to their cabin. Can, can we do that too? Oh yeah, where's your stuff? I can take care of it. Uh, can, can we all go to the cabin? Oh yeah, dude, obviously, like. We don't want to sit out here in the cold all day. Like, who would want to sleep in the cold? Come on. Okay. I try to pick up the stuff and carry it uh, for them. Sorry okay. to yeah. one arm um, and look cool for the kids. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, pick up as many chairs as you can. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you you have your little key. Um, it says the number two, and on the back there's a little image of uh, like a rock. Um, and so you kind of make your way to your cabin, you open it up, um, you know, with you, the bags and stuff like that. Um, and as you open it up, it is essentially a mountainside. Um, are you familiar with how rock climbers like suspend and sleep in tents, uh, like very, very high above the ground? Yeah, they like use the ropes and like put it under them, right? Kinda, yeah. So essentially, they have all of these anchors and ropes, uh, and cams and stuff like that, and they've anchored like a tent to, like the rock wall, the rock face. Um, and this is a very similar situation to that. Obviously, not complete rock face because that makes no sense on how you'd even get to that. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's very similar. Um, a very sketchy situation as far as um, you know getting to your tent. Uh, and you know, kind of setting up um, in your in your tent inside of a cabin. So this um, this tent is suspended midair, right, by ropes. Uh, for the most part, yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna being a 265 pound orc wearing heavy armor. I'm gonna like give the kids the stuff like um. I'm gonna check to make sure if there's any anything in there. I'm just gonna slowly creep in and see if it can even handle my weight. Yep. Um, so the tent, although it wiggles a little bit as there is, you know, it's just some general give with any tent that you go in, um, it, it doesn't really give. Um, it's very sturdy. Seems like it can hold your weight very easily. Um, it's just that you are in a tent suspended. Um, so it doesn't offer you like an insane amount of space in any which direction, especially with the size of you. Dude, it's a flying fort. Get in here, kids. Uh, so there is another tent. There's a second tent for them. They kind of get into that one, um, set their stuff up, set their stuff down, um, and are just kind of like looking around, um, a little nervous at the height. Uh, just kind of like, just like looking around, trying to make sure uh, that nothing bad's gonna happen. Okay, listen. Now I am gonna be teaching you guys the wondrousness of the church of the grazing mustangs. We are gonna party. We are gonna grow strong, and we're gonna learn how to treat each other with non-assless qualities. 
You guys ready to have the best sum of your life? Yeah, I... We're not going to party here, are we? We're going to party everywhere. Here's the thing. First lesson. First lesson. The party is not reliant on the place, but the people. Remember that, young one. Okay. Um, cool. I... Hmm. Okay. Uh, and they're they're still just very nervous uh, with their with the height um, and kind of like where they are, um, but they get more or less used to it um, and end up kind of like leaving the cabin, uh, similar to um, Telly's situation where they're just kind of like, yeah, there's not much to do here. So <laughs> I just ju- um, I just jump out of the tent with no reserve or anything, just. Awesome. Uh, yeah, you just jump right out of the tent um, and you guys exit the cabin. Um, and then we'll jump to um, Poppy. Um, so you have your key. Uh, you are now a back to being a person. Um, you, uh, the twins that you notice uh, from earlier, um, they come up to you. Um, it's like, hi, <clears throat> I'm Biff. And the other one is like, Hey, uh, I'm 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 Gif. Hello. Do you, do you want to go to the cabin the the cabin right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you, do you like horses? Yeah, I mean horses horses are pretty cool. Yeah. P- pretty cool. Have you ever seen a horse? They're they're a lot more than than I pretty mean, cool. You... I mean, they're like they're like they're amazing. They're majestic. They're beautiful. They're intelligent. I mean, you just turned into one, so we can we can look at a horse whenever whenever we want. When, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. And they just kind of like start pushing each other a little bit um, in like that angsty, like kid boyish fashion. Um, and just like, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's let's go to the cabin. Let's go to the cabin. Or I will hit you with a ray of frost. What? And start walking towards the cabin. <laughs> they just like chill out immediately and just like okay okay and they grab their stuff and follow you um you uh on your key it says cabin three on the back of it seems to be a little bit uh like a picture of a palm tree um or like tall um kind of fauna and uh, as you open it up similar to telly um but also very opposite you are blasted with an insane just depressing amount of heat um, as you take a step in. And similar to the Arctic tundra, uh, this cabin seems to be an endless expanse of a desert. Um, You have kind of two small, like little oases um, with uh, like hammocks and stuff like that for you guys to sleep as your bunk or bunks or beds, spaces to utilize um but like you need you need water um (laughs) uh it's very hot um so they're like oh my god this is so cool this is so cool how far do you think we can run i think i can run farther than you i i know for a fact they can okay and they just kind of like drop their stuff at the door and just start running as fast as they can um towards the hammocks and stuff and they just surpass the hammocks and just kind of keep running children Children, children. And they stop the tracks and they look back. I'm, I'm, we should, we should go get water. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's, that's smart. Maybe, maybe, um, no no running. Somebody in the camp needs help. Do you think somebody needs help? What? You, You think some, somebody in the camp might, you know, need some help? Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go get some more. We're going to go help some people. Um, and they just kind of like together jog back over to you, um, and, you know, get their stuff and set it next to like their, their hammocks and stuff. Uh, and they kind of beeline it for the door, um, to, to search essentially. (laughs) So yes. Water. Good, good, good job. Children. Great. Let's go, let's go get like all the water. Um, and so they exit uh, the cabin. 
Um, are you following them? Yes, are I will ready? follow. Okay, so you're following. Great. Uh, lastly, Malgam, um, you you look at your key. Um, it is it says four on one side. On the other side, um, there's nothing. Uh, it's blank. Um, doesn't seem to be any, anything carved in there. Um, and you get two little girls. Uh, they kind of come up to you. Um, the first one, a tiefling um, named Jude. She's like, hi, I'm, I'm Jude. Um, nice meeting you. Uh, and the other one, um, Enos, uh, who's a gnome. She's like, hi, I'm Enos. It's nice meeting you. <clears throat> Hello, children. Um, can, can we go put our, put our stuff um, in our cabin, please? That's a great idea. We should bring all our stuff to the cabin and then report in 15 minutes for PT. PT stands for physical training. Yeah, oh, but, um, and Enos just kind of like under her breath, she's just like, yes. Uh, and Jude's like, Oh, but um, and you can just kind of see in her bag there's like more books than just about anything else um, and she just kind of like looks at her bag and she's like P PT oh, okay. Okay. okay it's smart you pack so much weight because we're going to be carrying our packs and running to the cabin and then I guess you can keep yours because it's heavy and then we'll be running another place so you you kind of get your stuff ready um, Enos kind of gets her bag, um, and although is not really making any eye contact or saying much, but is kind of like right behind you, and Jude is just like, it may as well just be dragging her bag um, as she's just like moseying her way uh, to the cabin um, following you. Children, fall out! And then he just starts running. <laughs> Jesus, book it. Um, so... Jude, it takes a little bit longer than Ennis. Ennis is more or less right behind you. Um, but you get your key out, you open your cabin, um, and it's a cabin. Um, just inside, there's a, a room. It's you know more or less like the like the master bedroom of the cabin. That's yours. Um, and in the other space, there's a set of bunk beds. Um, you know, there's a, a bathroom on one end. And um, that's just, it, it's a cabin. Mm. This looks too comfortable. Those beds look too soft. I'm not sure about this. Uh, can you roll a perception for me? Yes. Oh, good. I rolled a three, so. Oh, what? Sorry? Gonna I rolled a three, so I'm not going to perceive whatever's happening. <laughs> You walk right in, um, you, you know, you put your stuff down, uh, you're totally, totally good to go. It's a, it's an acceptable cabin, right? Um, Enos follows suit. She kind of sets her stuff um, at the foot of her bunk uh, or at the foot of the bunk. Um, and Jude, as soon as she walks through the front door, you notice she's, oh, oh that was, that was really weird. Um, Okay. Uh, can I can I get by? Uh, uh, talk, talk punk. Great. Um, so she uh, kind of moses over and just has like a hard time like pushing all of her books and bag to the top bunk. Um, and is like, uh, I don't want to run. Can, can we go see what everybody else is doing? No, it doesn't matter what everyone else is doing because we're going to be doing PT and we're going to be doing it better than anyone else. And it's uh, what we're going to do. And Enos is just like, yeah, dude, come on. Um, it's, you know, this could, you know, it might help you out a little bit. And she's like, oh, all right. Like, all right, well, I'll be waiting for you outside. And she just kind of takes a step outside um, uh, to wait for you. Um, and as, and so everybody, this kind of all happens um, all at once, more or less. Uh, and so everybody, you've been introduced to your cabinets. Um, kudos, congrats. Uh, <laughs> um, as pretty much all the kids make it make their way back outside the cabin, you see um, Karaki 
is leading um, another kid, um, a little uh, a little guy, um, to all the cabins. Um, she's like, did um, you got no? You guys didn't get the kids assigned. Who who were you assigned to? And the little kid uh, who is um, a grung. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a grung is a like a humanoid frog uh, kind of being um, generally perceived as like evil. Um, a lot of the times cannon fodder in normal d and um, At this point, they're a well-developed um, species race uh, of, of individuals. And it's like, well, I wasn't giving anybody. Um, so I I, I don't know. I'm supposed to, uh, this is, I mean, you don't look like, you don't look like you play any music, do you? Uh, and she's like, um, oh, oh dear. Um, uh, can I, can I get all of the, the counselors, please? Um, just right back at the, um, right back at the amphitheater. Thank you. Uh, so you guys all hear that um, as Karaki ushers this little, uh, little frog kid. Um, to the amphitheater, um, and I will give you all like kind of one like, phrase to leave your kids with uh, for right now. Stay. Oh, uh, but what about what about the water? What about the water? Didn't you say we needed to get water? Water. What water is okay. good? Go get go get water. Okay. Great. Great. And Perfect. Then- um, somehow they miraculously find a handful of buckets and they sprint to the lake uh, that is nearby um, to start filling buckets of water. I hate that. Um, wait, what? She just said it to herself. I hate that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, and you make your way to the amphitheater. Uh, and everybody else. I want to dart my eyes back and forth between Ophelia and Caroline. And can I roll inside to see which one may be slightly more responsible? Um, Sure. Yeah. Can you uh, roll inside for me? Eight. Eight. Um, I mean, they're about the same age. They're both you know, little girls seems, um, I mean, dragonborn are a little harder to read. Uh, dark elves may or may not have heard like some good and or bad things about dark elves. So, um, but realistically dark elves, they're a, uh, matriarchal society. So with her being female, potentially she holds some level of responsibility. All right, Caroline. You're in charge. Don't make me regret it. And I start walking to the amphitheater. Okay. 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 Uh, and you start walking to the amphitheater. Um, and uh, Caroline just kind of turns to Ophelia as they start talking. Um, and then Boney and Malcolm. Um, I'll turn to my uh, two, uh, uh, two games. Okay, uh, little dude and uh, little do that. Um, I have to do some uh, counselor stuff now. I don't exactly know what it was. Um, In fact, they haven't really told me anything about my responsibilities. But you two seem cool. Think of a list of things you enjoy. And we're going to try to incorporate that into this year, okay? I will. Okay. Yep. I I put my... Reagan is... like, you gave me a task. Perfect. Um, as she just like immediately whips out um, a pen and paper. It's like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I can do this. I can do this. Uh, I'm going to put my giant, take my like giant fist is probably the size of the head, put it down like next to them. Hey, camp num- um, cabin number two on three, okay? One, two, three. Cabin two. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, you know, they both bump your sing- like single fist um and you you take off uh malgam you're up remember children today the first is the first day of the rest of your lives as of today you're both soldiers you're no longer a tiefling and a gnome you are killing machines and training 
and also uh, remember that. Um, let's see here. Uh, fe fe fear is uh, a comfort, and pain is a gift. Okay. And we're going to be doing a lot of exercise. You should know that. Okay. You should prepare uh, yourselves. Yeah, it's like, okay. Um, and June, um, as you kind of turn to walk towards the amphitheater, she just like puts a hand on Enos's shoulder. It's like, thank God. Thank God. You don't have to do that. Um, awesome. So you guys make your way to back to the amphitheater um, as Karaki is standing there. It's like, so, um, first counselor task. Um, so this little guy, his name's Breezy. Um, and he kind of looks to you and is like, hey, hey, how's it going? Um, <clears throat> yeah, hey. Uh, and she's like, and he, um, well, he found his way to the wrong camp. <laughs> so, um, as some of you might not know, uh, Nat Camp isn't the only summer camp on this huge, huge swath of reserved land. So, um, you're going to have to um, guide him to the other side of the lake um, to uh, Camp and Roll, um, which is a musical uh, camp of bars. It's like, uh, and Breezy is like, yeah, um, Camp Rock was already taken, so they just kind of took the other half of it. It was, he's pretty witty. He's like, camp and roll, camp and roll. Um, and she's like, he's a treat. Uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned before, um, these grounds aren't exactly safe for a little kiddo. So um, I'm going to need you four to... Um, take him and get to the other side of the lake. Uh, it's a little bit of a stretch. I know, um, I know it's a lot to ask on the first day, but I'll handle all the other kiddos. Uh, we'll get, you know, we'll do some other tasks and fun stuff um, while we wait for you guys to get back. Uh, it shouldn't take you, you know, more than a day. Do I have to go? Yes. Um, we can go. Yeah, there, there should be a full party with this, uh, with with this one. <laughs> why, why you there say should that? be a full party with this one. What was that? Hey, uh, Karaki. Why did the uh, counselors cross the lake? <laughs> why? Oh no, I forgot the punchline. But it's good, it'd be good when I remember it. I think Malcolm I... could do it alone. What? Malcolm could do it alone. No, I could do it alone. Hey, Breezy, um, what do you play? <clears throat> I play, um, well, back at my village, um, I play the flute. <laughs> um, you know, some, something that's not that super cool, but I think it's pretty super cool, so. However you express yourself as cool, little dude. Hey, do, do, do you know any songs by the uh, Grazing Mustangs? No, no, I have never heard of the crazy Mustangs. <gasps> Do you have your flute with you? Yeah, yeah. You want you want to see it? Uh, and he pulls out. It's like a wooden uh, carved flute. Um, you know, similar to like a recorder, not necessarily like a, a flute, more like a flute. Um, and uh, kind of presents it to you. Um, you see the mouthpiece is significantly larger than what you would find in like the human world um, as he's a grung. So like his mouth is super wide uh, being part frog. Um, so it needs to kind of like fit uh, with like that embouchure, you know? So, um, so he kind of says, it's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. Uh, Karaki. Is there a boat we take, or are we going by foot? You're going by foot. Um, the lake is... The lake is the lake. Uh, you'll kind of find as you go. Don't drink the water. Um, you can kind of take the, uh, you know, the north or south path. Um, either or gets you there in about the same time. Um, and you should most likely hear that camp um, pretty soon here. So... Hopefully you can get this kiddo uh, to camp on time uh, for his first day. Um, shouldn't, you know, 
I recommend the party of four here. Um, Camp so, supervisor, I, I have a question. Yes. Are we authorized to use lethal force if necessary to protect the frog child? Yes, 100%. Uh, like I said, the wilderness here is pretty scary. Um, it can get pretty dangerous. Um, and where this isn't like the rest of the world where all the baddies are pushed to the border, uh, we kind of live harmoniously. But in that sense, if you need to kill, protect this kid. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, what was that? Nothing. Oh. Okay. Uh, so before you guys go, I have a recommendation. Um, I'll take Breezy here to get his stuff. If you guys can go see um, our our main man, um, you know, uh, Thero, uh, Thero Sortemal, um, the man that has all the stuff, he can hook you up um, with some things that can help you on your little, your little adventure. You might need it um, kind of moving forward here. So I'm gonna go with Breezy uh, just for right now. I'll let you go talk to, uh, to Thero. And uh, we'll kind of meet right back here. So she kind of ushers Breezy to go get his stuff. Um, and you guys see a hut of sorts, um, you know, kind of to the west of the amphitheater where all the cabins were to the east. Uh, the, um, this little hut is to the west. Um, you can kind of see a trail of smoke coming from the top. Um, so you make yes. your way to the little hut, um, to Thero's hut. So... Um, you, you get there, um, you can see that, um, unlike the kind of church-esque looking building that's just totally enveloped by, like, trees and fauna, this is far more catered. This is far more, like, nurtured and tended to, um, there are a plethora of various plants um, you know, uh, different like smaller trees and like vine plants and stuff like that, that just kind of like, um, are meticulously placed all over this, um, this little hut. And, um, you guys kind of turn the corner, uh, around to the front and you see a fur bog, um, which is, uh, um, it, it's a, a race in D and D. They're very nature loving. They're larger, um, similar to like a half orc, um, but very you know keen on nature um, and stuff like that. Uh, generally with like grayish skin, um, and uh, he Thero uh, kind of turns. He's like, ah. <clears throat> I was wondering when I was gonna be able to meet you guys. <laughs> I'm Thero. Uh, nice meeting you. Dude, you're so big. Let's arm wrestle. It's like, oh, oh, oh no, my my joints don't uh, allow for that any longer. I, he's, uh, I, I'm well past my prime. Oh, well, in that case, I just touch him in his forehead. I try to heal him with lay on hands. Um, you do essentially. Uh, it doesn't really do anything really. He's just like at that age where he's just old enough. Uh, so he's, you know, at full HP, but still suffering just age issues with joints and stuff like that. Wow. The, um, the leopard segment of my tricks is really right about uh, fate burning out. I mean, not that you don't do it well. Uh, you do it very well, uh, friend. Uh, Thanks. Uh, so it seems you guys need some tomes, right? <gasps> Did you say tones? Tomes? Tomes. Uh, D O M E S. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here, I got you. Uh, you um, go, go, man. Uh, can I get your name? Telly. Telly. Oh, great. Great name. Um, what's your class? What do you do? I'm a bard. Bard. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, big guy. You. I am the very first paladin of the Church of the Grazing paladin. Mustangs. Great. Super cool. Okay, uh, a little right. late. Um, what's your name? I like horses. I'm I'm Poppy. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, what what do you do? What what's your thing? 
I like horses. Uh, I can, aside from, what? I, I can I can do some magic. Magic. Okay. What, what kind of magic? You a you a sorcerer? You a, a warlock? Druid? Wizard? Nature. Yeah. Nature. Druid. Wizard. Sorcerer. Wizard. Wizard. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I needed. That's what I needed. Did I mention that? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, little guy, little guy, you, what do you do? What's your thing? Uh, I'm actually not that little, um, for my kind. No, okay. Uh, yeah, I've seen plenty of dwarves in my life. Uh, yeah, I guess you're a little on the tall side. Uh, what, what do you do? What's your, uh, what's your class? I'm, uh, I'm a monk. I, I Great. Yeah, oh, fine. Great. Uh, cool. He, he kind of <laughs> he turns around, uh, completely ignoring everything else you have to say, um, and grabs a bunch of books. Um, and these um, are, uh, you can see they have they each have a different kind of symbol on them that kind of uh, uh, represent your class essentially. So. Um, to you, Telly, he hands two books. Um, there is a liar on each of them, um, signifying that it's like the, for the bards. Um, Boney hands, um, hands them to you. It's a uh, sword in the shape of a cross with a shield. Um, and uh, Poppy, uh, it's a book that uh, with, I guess, the depiction of another book with flames on it. Pardon, sorry. And um, uh, Malgum hands you um, a book with, uh, it's a staff with uh, kind of like an, um, like a gourd uh, on there. Um, so all of the, the, each of you receive two books. Um, and he's like, look, all you gotta do, I know you didn't make it too far through school. So all you gotta do is open it up, read a couple words, and um, the book should just disappear. Uh, and then you will essentially gain all of the knowledge from the books. It's kind of how progression happens here. So, um, you know, as you bring me things that I deem um, worth getting, uh, you'll get more books, right? So um, start off with this. It seems like you guys are going to the other side of the lake. Like uh, you. What was that? You want one of my campers? Uh, no, no, that's not, that's not what I mean. That's maybe while you guys are out on this little adventure, you can bring back some spoils of war, as it were. Uh, I don't know, like I a, like the sound of that a lot. Yeah, yeah. This guy knows. This guy knows. Maybe like a goblin tooth, or uh, hey, hey, Reagan's a wonderful little girl. And you will be not taking any for teeth. I mean the bad ones. I mean the bad ones. What do you mean the Look. bad ones, okay? What do you mean by the bad ones? I'm a 200-year-old fur bulk, all right? I've seen some changes. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I got sorry. my eye on you. <laughs> sorry. 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 You want some weed? Actually. <laughs> potentially. Yes. One what one gold? Look, how about this, honey? You give me some weed right now, and you keep this book free of charge. Deal. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> so wait, you hand him some. Poppin says drugs. That's that can't. That's got to be a violation of 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 some sort of rule. No, Malgum. She picked weeds when we got here. Yeah. She picked weeds. Weeds. Mm. Yeah, these plants. They're just all over, you know? We gotta get some drugs. Drugs. Oh, they were drugs. got some, some weeds in the distance to what you gave me? Dude, Poppy, you're multi-talented. So, uh, good luck on your adventure. I'll get to the weeds. Um, and if you find anything out and about, let me know. Uh, and I can, I can help you, help me, help you. So, uh, oh. yeah. 
Do you have like a an audio book version of this? Like I'm not gonna lie, even before we were kicked out of school, I was kind of on the bubble. Like the the reading and me don't go too too great together. Aren't you? Are you trying to be a paladin? Well, I, I'm trying. You know, we're all we're all growing in our field. You read about your religion. We're more of an oral tradition kind of kind of thing. Um, have you uh, heard about us? Here and there, you know, things come, things go. Yes. And some things stay forever, like the church of the uh, grazing mustangs. Mm. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm eager to see. Eager to see. Good luck on your adventure. Come back to me if you need anything. Bony, okay. are you Mormon? No, 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 no. Um, the Mormons don't allow any drinking. Well, we specifically promote drinking. Um, we're kind of like the anti-Mormons. They kind of hate us. Notice. Can I read mm. from my books? Sure. Uh, so you open your books. Each one that you open, you only read like a couple words. Um, it's nothing it's difficult. It's like skills really. and music theory. Yeah, kind of. Uh, and so from that, you just um, magically, the book starts to dematerialize uh, and disappear in your hands. And after it fully disappears, you just kind of feel a big rush um, into your face as you successfully level up. And you do that twice. Uh, you're now up to level three, and um, you're good to go from there. Um, everybody else doing the same? Hold I'll on do to the it. same. What if I was just like, no, no, don't level me up ever. Okay, Stay level, level one. one the whole time. <laughs> a, a slight breeze has Poppy. She's dead. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Awesome. I would, I would also like to start reading my books. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so you all read your books. Um, you all increase to level three. And mm. um, Karaki returns to Thero's cabin to meet you guys uh, with Breezy. They have He has all this stuff that he's carrying. He's like, okay, um, thanks, Thero. <laughs> he's just the coolest little guy. Um, so have fun. Uh, always be careful and don't drink the lake water. Um, seriously, don't drink the lake water. Question. I can't yes. I want to drink the lake water. Well, you shouldn't. Um, what happens? <laughs> because you'll <laughs> your pants. Sounds like a good detox strategy. Like if I'm a little hungover, a little bit of that, boom, out of my system. I have I'm iodine like, tablets in my rucksack. It should render it relatively harmless. <laughs> okay, I you are all adults here with a job. I will let you make your own decisions. Uh, good luck with Breezy. Um, we will most likely not send anybody after you um, after like two days if you haven't returned. Uh, but like I said, it should be a pretty quick trip. So um, good luck. Uh, I'll tend to your campers, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Before she goes, I want to say, hey, big boy guy, watch him around Reagan. He doesn't He doesn't like goblins. Watch him around Reagan. <laughs> sure. It'll be all right. Don't you worry. <laughs> I also want to go over as Boney walks away and whisper, if Boney shits his pants, we're sending him back. Okay, um, sounds good. <laughs> he might. <laughs> so, okay, bye-bye. And she kind of goes back to um, handling all the kids. They're all kind of at the amphitheater uh, and she's trying to get them all like very excited. She's like, who wants to go rock climbing? Let's go. And so she uh, kind of marches off towards um, a trailhead uh, that leads to a mountain. Um, with no gear whatsoever, uh, <laughs> uh, and leaves you guys with Breezy, 
um, and Breezy's just kind of sitting there, uh, kind of, you know, picks his ear a little bit. He's like, all right, um, what direction? I vote south. Down. So, uh, not south either way, dudes. Don't we have access to a map or coordinates or anything? She said either trail will take us there. Plus, it's camp and roll. We can hear it. True. All right, let's go south. Let's Breezy, go. play that yeah. flute while we walk, and then I want to oh, take yeah. another hit of that weed. <laughs> Don't. Okay, uh, so you take another hit. Um, Breezy pulls out his flute and starts playing um, a mellow tune for you all as you march off um, on the trail. And from there, uh, we'll end the session right there. Um, we'll pick up with your guys' adventure to Camp and Rock, um, and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully get Breezy to where he needs to go. Um, alive. Yeah. Which will it be? Hopefully Bony is just staring at the lake water the entire time. If you sh your pants, <laughs> <laughs> she explicitly warned. market flannel and a pair of Wrangler jeans if you know what I mean he's got a pair of old boots he's kicked every rock down the street yeah you know what I mean I mean he wants to be a cowboy yeah he calls himself Red Nexon he's just looking for adventure picking fights with the neighbor king yeah he dreams about the outlaws Six shooters and spitting beer Starting fires in his front lawn You can tell he's not fitting in Smoking Marlboro Reds, but the feeling never lasts. He's skipping classes on Monday and getting drunk with his buddies. And he still wants to be a cowboy, but now he calls himself Heart Throbs. He's just looking for adventure, getting trashed with the neighbor kids. James and Becky and her blonde hair, and her parents really hated him. Doing donuts in the front yard You can tell he doesn't give a shit What are you here for? No place in particular? There's no horses in Pittsburgh What are you here for? No place special? He's got no pasture to roam Moose animal Dropped in the suburbs